Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm watching Black Hole's evil twin Gravistars explained by Kultsgesagt. I have absolutely no idea what a Gravistar is, but apparently it's at least somewhat similar to a black hole considering they're calling it its twin, whatever that means. So let's check it out. A link to the original video will be down in the description below. There might be an object so indestructible, extreme and brutal that it could kill black holes. Gravistars, cosmic soap bubbles filled with pure energy and with a shell made of the weirdest material that's possible. So how we said could be? What are they? What do they look like? I'm guessing like? this is just theoretical. Are they just a theoretical fever dream, or will they change our understanding of the universe forever? The birth of the most extreme objects in the universe. Very massive stars die in the most dramatic way possible. So I'm assuming this is all just supernova. theoretical. We've explained Nothing this process in concrete. detail before. But in a nutshell, in less than a second, their cores collapse, crushed under their extreme gravity. The star's shell rushes in, bounces against the collapsing core, and explodes, shining brighter than whole galaxies. Depending on how massive the star was, there are two possible outcomes. Either the core compresses into a super a neutron, dense neutron or a star, black hole. or it kind of breaks reality and collapses into a singularity, an infinitely dense point with no size or dimensions at all. A place where the laws of the universe stop making sense and time and space are reversed. A black hole. Gravistars are a third, even weirder option. Instead of collapsing into an infinitely dense point, the core is kind of ground down, like a rock pulverized to dust by a cosmic hydraulic press. Atoms and particles are crushed so hard that they transform into pure energy. A sort of mini-universe, if you want. And just like our universe, this bubble violently wants to expand and grow. In a fraction of a second, the bubble smashes into the collapsing star. So it's star like a separate it. universe the in our mass universe. Of the star collapsing under its own gravity meets the titanic violence of the expanding energy bubble. Like an ancient god hammering on its anvil, matter is trapped between an immovable object and an unstoppable force, forging a new kind of material that we've never seen before, but that we know is physically possible. And then it suddenly stops. A gravistar is born. What does it look like? Okay, so there is actually something to this. Apparently, this material we know exists, or at least it's possible. So, at least it's not all just theoretical. Cosmic soap bubbles. Just like black holes, a gravistar can have any mass, but a typical one would be about the size of the London metropolitan area and so it's pretty as small. massive as 10 suns. The shell of the gravistar is utterly dark and the coldest thing in the universe, only a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. If we look wow. at it in deep infrared, even the cosmic microwave background glows bright in comparison. How can anything made of matter be that cold? Don't all atoms jiggle back and forth? The thing is, the shell's not made out of atoms. It's made from an entirely so new, it? unique and extreme matter that doesn't have a name yet and that's at the very limit of what's physically possible in nature. Actually, the shell is so incredibly thin that atoms seem truly gigantic next to it. And yet, despite being ultra-thin, because it's been forged by two impossibly extreme forces, the shell is incredibly tight. So tight that if you wanted to stretch the whole shell by just one meter, you'd need the energy of an entire supernova. What about the inside? Well, it only gets weirder. The interior of a gravistar is perfect. But hold on, if you need so much energy to just stretch it one meter, shouldn't it be practically impossible for this thing to expand? Unless the energy inside of it is just that strong. Of course, this is all theoretical, but let's pretend it's real, for now at least. Perfectly simple, because it's sort of empty. Completely empty. A perfect vacuum without a single atom, particle or wave. But despite pure being nothingness. as empty as it gets, this vacuum is boiling with the most primitive and fundamental kind of energy in the universe. We need a detour to explain how any of this makes sense. The fundamental nothingness at the core of it all. The inside of a gravistar breaks our brains a bit because it's a sort of super condensed nothingness. What does this yeah, even that mean? Even possible? We'll have to simplify and use metaphors to make sense of what scientists measure and calculate. According to our current understanding of physics, 
Particles like quarks, electrons, photons, and so on are not really solid objects, but sort of waves in an ocean. In our human world, you can't have waves without water. And in the smallest world, you also can't have particle waves without some kind of underlying omnipresent cosmic fluid. This fluid is the vacuum, what we perceive okay. as nothingness. It's the fundamental ocean at the bottom of reality. The waves of this vacuum ocean are the particles that make up you and everything else. But even when there are no waves or particles traveling through it, the fluid is still there. And like any fluid we know, it has inherent energy. Vacuum fluid is everywhere in the universe. The room you're in is 99.98% vacuum between the air particles bouncing around. Between the trillions of particles making up your cells, there's vacuum. It's just but it's mostly different vacuum. Inside a gravistar. When our star collapsed and condensed so violently, it was as if the universe took a cosmic pump and compressed as much vacuum fluid as physics allows oh. into a kind of super dense nothingness. As said before, even without any waves, the nothingness vacuum ocean of the universe has energy. But the super dense vacuum inside a gravistar has almost a billion trillion so it's trillion just with trillion pretty much times infinite amounts of energy cubic centimeter than the vacuum outside the star. This is an Imagine if the shell was broken. What kind of violent explosion would that cause? Definitely more powerful than a supernova. Unbelievable amount of energy and mass in a tiny space. Just like you may have guessed it, black, black holes. Hole. This intensely compressed vacuum ocean can't be compressed any further. It's at the absolute physical limit of anything that can be squeezed together without breaking physics, like black holes do. The ocean would love to stop being so tight. It wants to stretch out and flow back into the ocean that surrounds the star, but it's trapped in the safest prison possible. The shell, which itself is right at the edge of the physical limit of any material possible, an eternal stalemate between two limits of the universe. But what would Let's happen if it actually this world did of get metaphors out? And get back to our world that feels I feel like more it would just real. explode. In our world, gravistars are perfectly black, eternal objects with borderline insane amounts of mass. Because they're so cold, dark, and massive, from the outside, gravistars look and behave exactly like black holes. Both massively curve mm. space around them and create all the fun effects we love black holes for, from trapping mass so and light in disks or slowing down time as you get closer. But for details, different. we've made one or two videos on black holes before. If you fell into a gravistar, one or two. they'd be have a lot of black holes. Before you even hit the surface, ripped apart and ground down by the gravitational forces. And once your scattered remains touch the shell, the atoms you were once made of would probably break down and dissolve completely, only to be converted into the vacuum energy of the interior, making the gravistar oh. an infinitesimal bit bigger and an infinitesimal bit more massive. So okay, it can suck things up like a black hole. But what exactly is the point? Isn't this just another video of wild scientific speculation just for the sake of it? The point. Black holes were suggested more than a century ago as an abstract solution to equations of gravity. For more than 50 years, they were considered mathematically valid, but too absurd to be real. Few believed they actually existed. But well, scientists kept we know they on do. paper and looking at weird things, and then we saw stars being thrown around by invisible titans. We saw light stretching around invisible gaps in the sky. And as our technology and theories improved, we even sort of took a picture of them. We have evidence for them, and they fit our theories. And nowadays, it's kind of common sense to accept them as real. Black hole. Imagine being the guy who suggests black holes and just being laughed at by everybody who thinks you're insane. And now, a hundred years later, it's like, yeah, black holes, pretty normal. Everyone knows they exist. Holes are extremely elegant and fascinating, but they also created a lot of questions that have traumatized physicists for decades. Singularities literally break our best understanding of physics. Traumatized by how impossible they this is, yet, it, yet it's real. Which shouldn't be possible. Gravistars are a relatively new idea without any of those problems. They don't need singularities that break physics or delete information. Okay, so of how this is explained right now, gravistars kind of seem like copium from scientists who just want to refuse the idea of a black hole. They solve the puzzles of black holes, but they too create new problems, like weird exotic matter for their incredibly cold and tight shell, super dense nothing to make a super massive empty core, 
But just like black holes, they do work on paper and fit what we see in the sky. So are they real and will we ever know? Actually, there is a way to find out. Black holes have an event horizon, while gravistars have a physical shell made of matter, which means that they behave very differently when they smash into each other. The collision of two objects, as massive as they are, creates well, huge amounts of to gravitational find waves, ripples in space-time that travel at the speed of light. You can think of them as the music of cosmic cataclysms. The collision of two black holes should sound like a bass drum, a deep thumb that stops quickly. But two gravistars colliding should sound like a gong, leaving subtle echoes behind. Scientists are listening for these echoes in the music of the cosmos. Unfortunately, black holes and gravistars are surrounded by such strong gravity that it swamps most of the music. It's like trying to tell two instruments apart through a thick wall of concrete. You need very sharp technology You wouldn't for that. be able to tell the While difference. we've made incredible progress in the last few years, we're not quite there yet. So this is where we'll end this story. Gravistars have the potential to answer some of the biggest problems in physics. Or they're just another idea for our discard pile. But this is why we do science. To learn that everything is different to the way we thought it is. Until the day we truly understand the nature of reality. So, Gravistars either solve a lot of issues that we've had with black holes, or they don't actually exist, and we just wasted our time on them. I mean, it, it's an interesting concept, because that's all I can really call it right now, because there's no proof that these things actually exist. It's still just a concept. So yeah, we know that black holes collide and they make a bigger black hole. Gravistars can collide. Would they just make a bigger Gravistar? Probably. But what would happen if a black hole and a Gravistar collided? What would the end result be? A bigger black hole? A bigger Gravistar? Or would they somehow cancel each other out? Or just something else entirely that we've never even seen before? Kind of like Gravistars because we haven't seen those either, but... Yeah, it's interesting, but there's really not much to say here because this is all just theoretical and there's not really any solid evidence for Gravistars even existing. Not yet, at least. So all we can do is wait until Kurzgesagt makes a new video in a few years when we actually have proof that these things are real. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you're interested, why not watch this video right here? And with that, I hope I'll see you in the next video.